So, hey, Nick. So last time we hey. uh, had a video, we uh, I think you went over showing us how Mason worked. And um, Mason really, you know, as we said, is a portable package manager for NeoVim, but, but it's really geared towards getting all of the binaries that are required to run LSP servers or debugger uh, adapter protocol servers, formatters, yeah. et cetera. I think it's important to delineate that when you said package manager, it's not like a Vim plugin right. package manager. It's more like packages for for tools that you would want to use within your personal development environment, like things like Prettier or LSP configs or uh, the other things that you said, right? Deb yeah. Debug adapter protocol, which I've never set up before, but I'm yeah. excited to learn about maybe. Uh, I don't have a DAP, uh, DAP uh, plug-in for this one. I, no, I have okay. done some stuff with Elixir, Elixir DAP, but uh, maybe another time. But yeah. on this one, so yeah, just looking at Mason, you know, Mason's a great tool for just managing those external binaries because a lot of times you'll want to use a LSP and you'll be like, okay, how do I deal with it? I Okay, I've got to go NPM install globally the TypeScript server or mm -hmm. something, right? So Mason does a good job of managing that in the background and making sure that those binaries or executables are in the path of a NeoVim when you start it and you don't have to worry about it, right? Right. So another, uh, a companion uh, plugin that, come, that you can install with Mason is Mason LSP Config. And Mason LSP Config is a tool that's gonna bridge uh, Mason, so the binaries or the executables that you installed and the NVIM LSP config plugin, just to make configuring those servers um, easier to do. And uh, and I've used that for a while, but I, I, I never really paid much attention to this page. And then I came to it, I don't know, a few weeks ago and was looking at configuration. And one of the things I noticed was, hey, there's this automatic server set up and it's an advanced feature. <clears throat> Not sure why it's considered an advanced feature, but um, it does have some some good information in the uh, help docs. If you want to, you know, pull up the uh, help command and and you know put in Mason LSP config automatic server setup, and it's going to go over kind of just the basics of what you need to do. One important thing that you need to take into a, account if you're going to use this uh, this automatic server setup is that all of your LSP configs have to be in uh, Mason LSP config. So you don't want to have both running. Those mm. they'll end up conflicting each other. I think that was so, my mistake for a while. Okay, yeah. So I don't think that was exactly obvious. So let's if we if I switch over here to um, my dot files, or in, in this case, I've got my LSP config Lua file up, and I'm going to kind of go over how I have my server set up. So uh, you know, you just call Mason dot setup, and then this is these are these here are my LSP configs. So in this case, there's this catch all configuration that's essentially w will be used whenever you install a Mason LSP configuration or excuse me, a Mason LSP server. Mm -hmm. It'll automatically start using this out of the gate. You don't have to come in and start, you know, configuring the LSP server to work. Uh, and then I have maps or, or uh, dictionaries for essentially the different um, uh, uh, LSP servers that I want to override the default configuration. So in this, so in my case, the Elixir LS, Lua, Tailwind, and I have a Emmet LS on there. <clears throat> so to show how you can make use of this, I have a project over here where I have a Svelte file. And right now, if I pull up Mason, we'll be able to see that I do not have the Svelte language language server as one of my installed servers. So uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it and kind of show you how I won't have to change my configuration file to start taking advantage of the fact that I can, you know, start using that LSP server. Mm -hmm. So if I do a search in here for Svelte language server, I can find that and I can hit I to install it. And then we can go up and we'll see it. Uh, it's installing now. So now the language server is installed. Now, one thing I will say is, is it's not going to work immediately. Because if you think about what just happened, we just installed an executable, or Mason just installed an executable into or onto our machine, and NeoVim was not started with that executable in its path, right? So I will need to uh, to quit NeoVim, restart it, 
Now I can go and open that file back up. And I haven't configured, I haven't done anything to configure Svelte, but uh, I generally, for the Svelte language servers, I think I've always used the default. So I don't need to configure it. I don't even need to, you know, go in and put it in my configs and, and do a blank setup because that default capture configuration in Mason LSP config is going to take care of that. So now uh, we can see that the LSP server is working. I'm getting um, auto, uh, auto complete on the fields from the application, which is something that is required, you know, an LSP server is required for. Um, so that I thought this was pretty cool and it's really made the, the experience more like, you know, kind of what VS Code or one of those other editors has where when you install a language server, um, it, are, it automatically takes care of the, 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 the initialization and conf uh, default configuration and you can mm -hmm. just start using it. So this is, this is pretty awesome. Um, it'd be interesting to see if there's a way to fix the having to restart NeoVim. Um, I think Mason could probably um, do something in the background to reset up the path, but I'm not 100% sure. But that would be something I might look into to see if I could help out the project because I think that would make it a ton better. And yeah. again, just get that 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 experience where you're just installing something and, and, and using it out of the you know out of the box. Yeah, that would be nice. But I'm so I guess paranoid of things not working that way that every time I do anything, I update plugins or anything like that. I'm always restarting just to to get it going. Yeah, or to make sure that it's set up properly. And the nice thing about NeoVim is that it's honestly so fast at restarting that it's pretty like it's not very intrusive to my my productivity flow. Right. Yep. I mean, essentially, you're quitting Vim and then just popping right back <clears throat> in, so it's not a huge uh, a huge time waste or anything. Yeah. Now, on one thing I wanted to ask about was on the uh, like in, in your your setup handlers there. Yep. Uh, is the main reason that you've specifically called out like Elixir and Tailwind and all of those? That's specifically because you're doing some kind of customization for it. But if you didn't need to do that, that top one should just be a catch-all for them, right? Yep. If I were not doing, uh, you know, so so in the, let's use the Lua one because that's a little bit more straightforward. If I were not trying to put things into the globals, so uh -huh. in this case, Vim. I could just use the default setup and and it you know it would work just fine. But yeah. in this case I'm like, hey, I'm I'm generally using Lua in when I'm configuring NeoVim, so I want Vim to be in the globals, so I need to add this 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 configuration mm -hmm. there to override the defaults. Got it. The Elixir one I I use um um, I could I could get rid of the Elixir one if I were not using um, the I, I essentially have the GitHub repo and I build it myself just so I can get some features quicker than their release um, cycle does. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I'm I'm overriding essentially. I don't even install Elixir LS with Mason in this case. I just I'm pointing at the executable and then you know doing the uh, the the, the gen, excuse me the generic. Um, setup that I want and mm -hmm. and that's why I do that one. And then nice. Tailwinds I'm doing it because there's I I like to use it in Elixir and I want to make sure it's uh picking up those those template files properly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I need to double check to see if I have that set up properly. Um another thing I wanted to ask about though was well this is for LSP config and honestly I'm so confused. I constantly like get confused between um Mason, Mason LSP config, null LS, Mason null LS. <laughs> like these, they play in such a close space that I'm constantly having to like look up and be like, which one is this one again? So I can't remember specifically if it was Mason LSP config or if it's just Mason itself that has the like automatic installation feature. Um, I believe, I, th I think Mason would be the one if, if that's the case, because it's installing. So if we look at their web, we we'll look at the web page real quick. Um, you're talking about it automatically installing a needed LSP or right. So like the the use cases with my dot files, I try and keep them in this state where I just basically run, I clone them and run a script, and I am basically up to date without having to do a ton of stuff. Yep. And without that automatic installation thing. I could like 
you know, reset, set up a new machine and it's all good until, you know, I try and run like a TypeScript file and then it's like, oh, I don't have Prettier installed. I don't have yep. uh, TypeScript language server installed and all of that. Um, and so it's like another step that you have to like tell people to do. Oh, in, like, I see. Me. Um, I believe it's Mason. And um, if I want you, if we look at my configs real quick, it may maybe it's not Mason because there's essentially um, you can tell it, hey, uh, I want these on here all the time, right? Yeah. Uh, what is that? Let's actually let's go back to this. Not because it's not in the LSP config, so it's probably in here. Set up. Uh, I know there is a way to do that because when I start up, if so, let's, if I go to a machine that I haven't been on in a while and I and start it up, I can see Mason upgrading, um, automatically upgrading the, uh, LSPs that are out of date. Mm -hmm. Where is it? It's not as obvious as I thought it was going to be. I think it's called ensure installed or automatic install or something. Yeah, it is. It's, I want to say insured. So in that case, let's just go back to here and we can do FG insure installed. And yep. So in this case, oh, uh, it is, it's a Mason, uh, it's a Mason thing and it's insure installed. What's MLT is that's just Mason. Yeah. In this case, uh, it's Mason tool installer, so it is a, it's a different, uh, apparently it's a different plugin. That one's new to me. <laughs> there are so many tools around Mason. So I got to go and uh, <laughs> Google that as well. Mason tool installer. And this is, a, this seems to be by a different, uh, yeah, this is by a different, is it? Yeah, it's by a different person. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think... I th So may, I obviously, Mason doesn't seem to have this in place, and this is just a... Somebody came in and did it, so I, I would imagine they would just be like, yeah, this, there's a good there's a good third-party tool out there that does it. So this is what's actually auto-updating my tools and automatically installing them for me. Well, there is... Mason is there... Mason LSP config and Mason LLS both have their own versions of it as well. Okay. So does it do, so I, I'm wondering if I'm automatically installed this one, do uh -huh. they do auto updates or is it just, I'm going to make sure this tool is installed on your machine? No, that's a good question. I don't, I think it, well, no. The only one that I see kind of automatically doing updates is TreeSitter, I think. Yeah, um, TreeSitter does it if you configure it. So I think the reason why I installed this one is because It'll do the auto update, ah, which okay. I per personally prefer. I'd rather the, them just be up to date. So my my mornings usually consist of a brew update, and then a vim plus lazy to lazy sync, and then I trigger Mason right after that to see if it has any updates. And so yep. I do kind of do it manually, but it lets me kind of keep track of what's updated and kind of, you know, if I see something important getting updated, then I go check the the readme or the the change log to see what what's changed and uh, see if there's any cool features. Yeah. I, so I know we, t we talked about lazy before and um, I moved over to lazy and have been using it. And the one thing I think I may start using more is not just odd. I, Cause with lazy, you essentially get this package lock and then you can mm -hmm. check that in. I think I'm going to make more use of that. So that way I get less of the, I'm just going to go update this. And now <laughs> I don't understand why I keep getting this error in this buffer or et cetera. So mm -hmm. I like a little bit more stability. Um, but yeah, cause I think I stopped running in Vim, uh, head just because I was like, you know what? I really, I'd really want to be able to open this and focus on work and not focus on <laughs> three hours of trying to figure out why my editor doesn't work. No matter how much fun that is. 